Uh, yes, I am David Verner. I am born and raised Alaskan. I am a disabled vet, business owner, and self-employed at the same time. Um, I've been working with the Occupy Movement National for about uh, three weeks now, and I was wondering what is your view on the Occupy Movement nationwide, and do you think it might be a possible way of uh, bringing hope and fixing the problems that we have with that current government? I think when, when people are, are compelled to, to come out publicly and to, to, to make a statement, make a stand, and to voice their concerns, their fear, uh, whether it's to elected officials or whether it is just to the crowd in general. I think that's a good thing. I think part of, of, of our problem today has been people have just kind of, I, I, I shouldn't say complacent, people have been living their lives. They've been raising their kids, they've been running a business, they've been doing things and they just that they're not gonna wake up and realize that, that their enemy now is the government. Um, they assumed that it was they that's right, but they assumed that it was gonna be good. And they didn't have to be engaged or involved. And so the, the, the Occupy movement that is out there, you know, started with, with the ancient and the Wall Street, it kind of morphed into to a broader anxiety and, and frustration that is manifested in lots of different ways. If you look at the people that are, are in Washington, D.C., or out on the, the park circuit Anchorage, you'll see all kinds of different signs. Sometimes it, it's, you know, the inequity of uh, between the, the, the classes, sometimes it's stop the war, sometimes it is, uh, you know, help me with my student loan. It, it is angst and anxiety and frustration with, I believe, regulation at all levels, whether it's Wall Street or, or lack of regulation or, or just speaking out against what they believe to be the unfairness. Um, can it be, can it be a positive? I think it can if, if, if you have it kind of coalesce and, and focus. I think right now there is there are some who say it, it takes in one direction and others who say it, it goes another. It's not so unlike what we saw last year and the year before with the Tea Party. People say, <laughs> I'm fed up. I, I've had enough. I want government to get out. And so they, they, they stood up. They were active. They were engaged. They were involved. And they will really commit. And so, you know, whether you agree or disagree with the Tea Party movement, or whether you agree or disagree with the Occupy movement, I think the fact that, that people are are motivated to really get out and be engaged, I think that's good for the process. Okay, so we'll take the lady in right there. Yeah, my name is. Fisher, um, I'm glad to hear your comment about that you support our, the Occupy movement because I am also involved in it, and my thrust in that is that I believe that government has been being bought and sold by special interests, and I would like to see the money, the special interest money, out of the government. My comment here tonight is that your presentation is excellent. I learned some things, and I'm very glad about that. However. Washington's approval record at this point is nine, uh, disapproval is 91 percent. Your your party and both parties point fingers and blame the other side. Even you tonight, the administration, the administration, you said it three times, is doing this. What are you going to do personally, you, to make it happen that you sit down and compromise and talk to people? Your side is not totally right. Their side is not totally right. I want to see compromise. And your point is right on the money. The Obama administration did not get us into this mess. The Bush administration did not get us into this mess. We've been getting into this mess on a bipartisan basis for plenty of time. There is plenty of blame to go around. And so, you, you, you point out that our approval rating in Congress is, is in the toilet. It's, it's 11% and that's on a good day. 
And part of it, I don't know, I believe that most of it, is because people look at us and say, when are you going to start the government? When are you going to address these difficult problems that we just laid out? What we do is we engage in messaging amendments. The majority knows that the amendment's not going to pass. We know that we're on the, on the Republican side, that we're just going to oppose it, and nothing gets done. So your, your point to me is, what are you doing about it? I am trying, trying as hard as I can to get people to sit down and say, it's not a Republican proposal, it's not a Democrat proposal. This is a proposal that has to work for the country. It has to work for the people of Alaska as equally as it works for the people of Massachusetts. And I would say that Massachusetts is a blue state and Alaska is a red state. So how do you make it happen? when you've got this level of, of partisanship. Sometimes it takes taking a lonely stand and going against what your party is doing. I did that. I've been doing that. In fact, it, uh, it caused me a problem in my Republican primary, if you will recall that here, because I was not the pure Republican candidate. I was trying and I continue to try to figure out how we can be responsive to the issues not based on partisan politics, but on the policies themselves. There are a few glimmers of hope. And I will tell you, this is where I have been working for you. I mentioned we've got a group of six members of the Senate who put together over the summer a proposal. The people that were part of that group are very, very diametrically opposed when it comes to their political persuasion. Tom Coburn is a very conservative member. Dick Durbin is, is a much more liberal member. These six individuals came together with some proposals that I don't like all of them. I don't like all of them, but does it put us on the right track? Are these proposals that are on it? Yes. So what have we done with it? We have grown that from six to 43. 43 members of the Senate, Republican and Democrat, who say that what you have built, while it's not everything that I would like, is there, is the majority of what is contained in this proposal something that, that I can support because it's in the best interest of the country rather than the best interest of my party? Yes. So, you haven't seen much discussion about that. Right now, all the focus is on what's going on within this select committee, this super committee, 12 members as two bodies, six folks out of the house. What's going on? But what we hear is that folks are lining up on either side saying, nope, you can't touch entitlement, and nope, you can't touch taxes. How are we going to resolve it. You've seen the you've seen the presentation here. If we can't put the full meal deal on the table, we can't change the direction that we're going. I am a, a person who kind of used the world um, the glass is half full. And I need to believe, as I think people in this room need to believe, that this group will come forward with a proposal that works for this country. Because if it doesn't, we go to the sequestration, we go to across the board cut, we're all going to feel the, the brunt of that, and we will have not solved the problem. We will have not solved the problem. So my commitment to Alaska is not to be representing the Republicans, not to be representing just those who voted for me, but to truly try to represent not only all of the people here in the state, but trying to represent a, an approach that is even-handed and fair and equitable, and encouraging other members to put the partisan politics behind so that we can, we can do what's right for the country. I know it sounds Pollyannish, but that, that's the only, that's the only way that we're going to be able to prevail.
Okay, so yeah, you have a seat next to our retired soldier, disabled, uh, loosely affiliated with the service matrix group. I've uh, got a couple of questions, and I'll ask the question. Just a real quick answer. I'm sorry, to get my question there before you stand up. Um, <laughs> do you believe that we should, that our leaders should be held accountable for their actions? Yes. Do you think we, as your constituents, should hold you accountable for your yes. actions or yes? Yes. Okay. Okay, that's fine. The occupied movement. Um, do you support the occupied movement in general and the whole? In general, yes. The whole package. Well, the whole package is people all over the country standing up and expressing their concerns, their fears, their anxieties. I support that. Have you read your manifesto? No. Um, Do you have it? Uh, no, I actually have it on my phone. Uh, now, I'm going to come to uh, you. Now, this is the last question. Okay. So, let me ask this last question, and it actually gives you a, a broader spectrum than just the answer no. If, for chance, you were president for one day, would you or what organization or department within the federal government would you abolish? Well, you know, I mean, we're all at the EPA right now. Um, so that's the natural inclination that we want to get rid of the EPA. But the fact of the matter is, is that for years, the EPA did what we wanted them to do. They kind of did their job. They regulated in a manner that was not overbearing or, or offensive. Um, what I want to do is I want the department, the agency, to do the job that they are tasked to do and not overreach and, and make laws as they have been doing. So I think what I would do is rather than, say, abolish Homeland Security, I would rather see that we pull back on the overreach that has been allowed over these, these, these past years to rein these, these departments in. What you have the, the expansion of the, the, the government agency over these past years to simply implement the regulations that, that are moving forward needs to be checked. So you that would have to the size of the government? I think that that does reduce the size of the government. I absolutely do. If we were, if we were able to pull back on, on many of these regulations, if we were to eliminate, we were to eliminate the Dodd-Frank financial regulatory reform bill, we'd be able to get rid of a whole lot of folks within the SEC, within the IRS. Um, they geared up just in anticipation of that legislation being implemented. So uh, if we are able to meaningfully pull back on regulations, I'm telling you, you are you are reducing the size of your government. I think the size of the waste. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I think the lady likes here.